fund research. To carry out fund research on O&M Profiler, click on research on the left and then select fund. This will open up in a new heading at the top and will take us into our fund research area. The layout of the search area has search facilities on the left hand side. Once you carry out a search you then get your results of that search in the middle. You have a quick view area on the right hand side and then lots of buttons up the top here and we'll try and cover off as many of these different areas in this session. Now one of the most common uses for this area of the system is if you're just trying to find a particular fund. Now that might be the client's existing fund, it might be a fund you've heard of, or it might just be a fund that you want to get some information for. Well if that's the case, what you do is you use the search funds box in the top right hand corner here. Now you can search for a fund based on a fund name, fund manager's name, fund company, icing code, CEDAW number, there's lots and lots of different ways of searching for a fund. As with all fund research systems, some funds can be abbreviated slightly differently. So if you find you can't find the fund once you've typed in the full fund name, you just need to scale it back a step or two. So maybe start off by looking for the fund company or maybe type in any words within the fund that are particularly unique. As a little bit of advanced warning, Invesco Perpetual Funds are the funds that we get the most phone calls about. A lot of those funds you will find under Invesco and a lot of those funds you'll find under IP. So if you don't find it under one, chances are you'll find it under another. But if you ever are struggling to find a fund, please give us a call and we can help you with that. So you type the details of the fund in here and then click on search. So that's how you use the search funds box in the top left hand corner. Another popular use for this area of the system is if you don't know the funds that you're looking for, but maybe you or the client has certain criteria that you're looking for a fund, you want to apply that criteria so that you can find the funds that match the criteria to recommend to your client. Well, you have a list of filters on the left hand side here and you can use these filters to apply the criteria that you're looking for and then ultimately find all the funds that match that criteria. Now your system will be set up with a default list of filters. These are things that we've found advisors search for on a regular basis when it comes to doing fund research. However, if there's filters on this list that you're not interested in, and in fact there's other filters that you would like to see on that list, what you can do is you can change your list of filters. And the way you do that is you click on change filters in the bottom left hand corner. It will then display a list of all the potential filters that you could make use of and the ones with the green tick next to it are the ones that are already included in our filters list. And it's just a case of going through ticking and unticking all the filters that you do and don't want on your system. As an example, if we didn't want TER as a filter, we can click on it and it will just remove the green tick. And if at a later date you want to add TER back in, click on it and it will add the green tick next to it. Your filters will then appear in the order that you've selected them. So if I click back on filters, then scroll down, all my filters will appear in the order that I've added them. So if I head down to the bottom of my filters list, so I won't go through all the filters at present. What I will do is go through and apply some very quick crude criteria just to get us down to a short list of funds so that I can show you what we can do with that short list of funds. So I'll select some criteria, starting with universe. You can search across multiple universes if you want, including equity share data. Just pop ticks in the boxes of all the universes you want to use. I'm just going to select one for now. 
and I'm going to select a few other filters. Now, within the investment sector filter, you can select specific sectors, but also within here, you have a secondary drop down box. Now, this secondary drop down box allows you to choose from the correct set of sectors that's relevant to the universe that you're searching in. So you have your life and pension sectors there, which relate to the life and pensions universes. You've then got AIC sector, which relates to investment trusts, IMA sector, which relates to OICS and unit trusts, and then equity sector, which will relate to your equity data. So I'm going to leave it on IMA sector, and you just scroll through and put ticks in all the boxes of all the sectors that you'd like to search in. Again, I'll just select one for now. Now the majority of our fund data is supplied by Morningstar, therefore you've got access to the Morningstar overall rating and the Morningstar OBSR analyst rating. So use your drop down there to select those ratings if you want. And then what I'll do is I'll use our TER filter, partly because we've just added it in, but also because it's a slightly different control. A lot of the filters are these drop down boxes that you see here, but some of them are what we call a slider control. And what you do with the slider controls is you slide the boxes into position to set your minimum and maximum parameters. So if you wanted to run a search based on a minimum TER, you would click on the box on the left and drag it into position. Or if you wanted to search for funds with a maximum TER, click on the box on the right and drag it into position. Now you can drag it exactly into position or you can click on the box underneath and just type it in. And once you click out of the box, it will drag it into position automatically for you. Now I've selected some criteria. If I want to double check what criteria I've selected, I can take my mouse, hover over filters and it tells me everything I've chosen. So if I need to make any changes, I can quickly do that. And if I want to clear everything down and start from scratch, I can click on the little X here, which is clear all selections. But I'm fairly happy with all the criteria I've chosen, so I need to tell the system to go away and search for all the funds that match that criteria. So what we do is we click on the search icon up the top there. That will generate the search. And in our taskbar at the top, it tells us how many matches have come back. We've got 15 matches, so we've got 15 funds that match the criteria on the left hand side here. Now before we have a look at those 15 funds, going back to this criteria that we've applied, if this is criteria that you apply on a regular basis, you don't really want to come in and out of fund research, find all your filters, select all your criteria, click on search every single time. That could be quite time consuming, especially if you've got a long list of criteria. So what you can do is you can save that search criteria meaning that you can load it up again very quickly in the future. Now the way that you do that is you click on this save icon up the top here. Now if you're ever unsure of what any of the buttons do, just take your mouse and hover over them. So with this one, click to load or save search criteria and fund lists. So if we click on it, you can then save the current search criteria. So give it a name that you're going to recognise it by. So it might be your quarter three criteria, it might be your balance manage criteria, it might be your OIT criteria, whatever it is, give it a name, then click save. In the future, if you now want to load that criteria, you click on the same icon, load a saved search and your criteria will be stored in here. So you would click on your criteria, it would pre-populate all of your filters and it would also automatically bring through a list of funds that match that criteria. So not only does it save you time, it also keeps you nice and up to date. You'll get a little box next to any criteria that you've previously saved. If you pop a tick in that box, that will allow you to share that criteria with other users at your company. 
Similarly, you can save the current fund list. So once you have a list of funds here that you're happy with, maybe they're your preferred funds, for example, you can save the current fund list. So again, give it a name that you're going to recognize it by. Click Save. Then in the future, again, click on the Save icon, load a fund list up, and My Funds is there ready for you to use. And you can also share it with other users at your company. So now that we've got our short list of 15 funds here, the first thing that we can do with that short list of funds is get access to information at a glance. And the way that we do that is by clicking on these headings at the top here. We automatically give you an overview of the funds. You've then got ratings and charges. We've got four different versions of performance, so click on the type of performance that you're interested in. We've got risk measures, so your alphas, betas, r squared, that type of thing. Platform availability, asset allocation, and key fund indicators. Now, this area of the system is completely customizable. You can decide which headings you want on your system. So as an example, if you're not interested in annualized performance or maybe asset allocation or ratings and charges, you can remove them. With platform availability, you can choose up to six preferred platforms that you would like to see available on your system. We've got quite a wide selection to choose from. And my key fund indicators, you can choose up to six key pieces of information that you like to view when you're doing your fund research. And there's absolutely loads of them to choose from. Now, the way that you alter the setup of this area is via your options button in the top right hand corner. Now, you don't have to do this. It is optional, but click on options. It will recognize that you're in fund research already and you use these results drop downs to select the options that you want. So with our results tab headings, using our example, let's just say we didn't want ratings and charges, so we can untick it. We can untick annualized performance and we can untick asset allocation. So we've gone from 10 tab headings down to seven. Preferred platforms, so go through your list there, tick and untick all the ones that you do and don't want. And likewise with key fund indicators, scroll through your key fund indicators there and tick and untick all the ones that you do and don't want. Now, once you're finished in here, click OK and the system will automatically refresh itself to reflect those changes. So we can see at the top here, we've no longer got ratings and charges or annualized performance or asset allocations. And your system will stay like that going forward. Now, within these tab headings here, you can also sort within your column headings. So if, for example, we've got our 15 funds, but maybe we want to prioritize it by three years cumulative performance. Well, if you click on cumulative performance, you'll have a column header here, which is cumulative over three years. If you click on that column heading, what it will do is it will order the funds from lowest to highest cumulative performance over three years. And if you click on the heading again, it will reorder it highest to lowest. So these 15 funds are sorted in order of highest three years cumulative performance. Now that I've got my short list of 15 funds, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to justify how I got to that short list of 15 funds. So what we can do is click on reports at the top and the two reports that I want to draw your attention to are fund sourcing and funds audit. Fund sourcing is a nice little one page or sometimes two pages depending on the number of results you've got in the, the fund grid there. But that will list all the criteria that we applied to our search and it will then list all the funds that match that criteria. So that's a nice quick win document to get on file. Funds Audit takes it a stage further and I'm just getting Funds Audit loading up in the background. Funds Audit incorporates our fund sourcing, so lists all the criteria that we've applied and lists the funds that match it. But what it also does for no extra work whatsoever, it then gives us a detailed look at each of the funds that match that criteria. 
and the way that it does it is it mirrors what information we had in our fund research area. So the audit report will display all the same information that we looked at in our fund research and just to remind us of that information, if I click back on research, we've got our overview, we've got all our different variations of performance, risk measures, platform availability and key fund indicators. Well that's the exact information that we have on our audit report. So we start off with our fund sourcing, so this is all the criteria that we applied and from just under 66,500 funds available, there are 15 that match that criteria. These are the 15 that match it then, so this is our overview of the funds. We've then got all our variations of performance right the way through to our risk measures, platform availability and our key fund indicators. So with all of our reports, what you can do is you can save them straight to your own filing system on your own computer as a PDF document, or you can just print them directly from here. I will close it down for now. So that was us looking at all the funds that match our criteria and producing a report to that effect. What about looking at just one fund individually and, and carrying out a further analysis on that fund? Well, to do that, click on the fund that you're interested in, and that will light up in blue to highlight it. But what also happens, over on the right-hand side, we've got our Quick View area. Quick View will draw what we call two panels of information on the fund that you've got highlighted. So we have a cumulative returns line chart here and a discrete returns bar chart. And what you can do is use the drop down boxes here to scroll through and find the panel of information you're interested in for the fund that you've got highlighted. So we've got lots of information, we've got asset allocations, clean share classes, we've got um, discrete returns, cumulative returns, lots of information on here about all of the funds. So there's a big long list of panels for you to choose from. If you click on a different fund to highlight it, it will then bring that information through for that fund. So the panels will relate to whatever fund you've highlighted at the time. Now if you're interested in any of these panels of information, what you can do is they all have a little magnifying glass in the top right hand corner. If you click on that magnifying glass, it will expand the panel out so you can see it in a little bit more detail. And in the bottom left, you've got two buttons. You've got a print button and an export chart button. The print button will generate a PDF document of that panel. So you can then save that PDF to file on your own filing system on your own computer. Or you could print it from there. Or what you can do with every single chart that we produce in the system, you know, whether it's a bar chart, pie chart, line chart, as long as it's a chart, you've got the ability to export that chart and use it in your own Word document. So you click on export chart and it would prompt you to save that chart as a JPEG or as a picture. It's a bit like taking a photograph. Then when you're in a Word document, for example, a suitability report, you can just insert that picture in. So that's us looking at two panels at any one time. What about if you want to view more than two panels at any one time? Well, if that's the case, click on the fund to highlight it, then click on this dashboard button that you have in your taskbar. Now, if you're ever unsure of what any of the buttons do, take your mouse and hover over it and it tells you exactly what you can do. Click to access detailed fund information and custom fund fact sheets. So if we click on dashboard, it will open up our fund dashboard and what it will do is it will bring through panels of information relating to the fund we've opened the dashboard with. Now we have over 50 panels of information on each fund where applicable, but we didn't think it would be very user friendly of us to put all 50 panels on here as a first view. One, it would be very overwhelming. And second of all, it would probably include quite a lot of information that you might not necessarily be interested in. 
So what we've done is we've given you a default dashboard view, so six panels on here with a variety of information on the fund. And we've also created some further dashboard layouts for you to make use of if you want to. Now the way that you load up any previously saved dashboard views saved by yourself or saved by us is you click on manage dashboards in your taskbar at the top here. Now again, if you're unsure of what that button does, take your mouse and hover over it. Click to load and save dashboards. Now under load existing dashboard, you'll have a list of dashboards there that are um, all in italic. So if you want to make use of them, just click on them. So for example, performance and risk, if you click on it, it will automatically refresh and bring through panels of information that relate to the performance and risk element of this particular fund. So make use of them if you want. If, however, you want to create your own dashboard layout, then what you need to do is manage the contents of the dashboard. Now, the way that you manage the contents of the dashboard is you click on Manage Contents on the top right-hand corner here. That will then spin the dashboard around and behind it you'll get a list of all the panels of information that you can make use of. And the ones with the green tick next to it are the ones that are already included in our dashboard. So what to do is go through, tick and untick all the panels that you do and don't want. Now if you take your mouse and hover over a panel name, it gives you a little preview on the right hand side of what that panel looks like. So you can make an informed decision as to whether or not you do or don't want to include that panel in your dashboard. If you do, click on it and it will place a green tick next to the panel name. So as I said, keep going through, ticking and unticking all the panels that you do and don't want. Now you can also change the size of the panels if you want. Up the top you have panel sizing, so click on that. Now we automatically give you the funds in a small panel layout, but you can go slightly bigger for medium panels or bigger still for large panels. Now once you've made all your selections in here, what we want to do is spin this area back around so that we can have a look at our dashboard and decide if we like it. And if we like our dashboard, we'll then be able to save it. So to do that, click on these two little arrows in the top right hand corner. They're what we call our spinning icon and you'll see that throughout a variety of areas in the system. And all it means is you can spin that area around. So it will spin us back around. Now we can see straight away that our panel sizes are bigger. And if we scroll towards the bottom, we can then see our additional panels that we've added in. Now, if you're looking at this information and you're thinking to yourself, yep, this is the information that I like to view when I'm doing my fund research. So I want to be able to save that layout so that I can use it again in the future for whatever fund I'm looking at. So we need to save the dashboard. So remember, to save the dashboard, you go to Manage Dashboards at the top, Save Current Dashboard, and then give it a name that you're going to recognise it by. So you might call it your dashboard, you might call it the company dashboard, you might call it your name, or you might give it a name that indicates what's included in that dashboard. So type the details in here and click save. Now I came in here with the Fidelity Money Builder Balanced Fund. If I now come in here in the future with any other fund, so Invesco Perpetual High Income, m and Corporate Bond, whatever it is, I can click on Manage Dashboards at the top, Load Existing and IFA Limited will be there for me to use. So I can load up these eight panels of information for whatever fund I'm looking at. You've also got a little tick box to the left hand side. If you pop a tick in that box, that will allow other users at your company to access that dashboard. 
Now, I call the IFA Limited for a couple of reasons. One, it's an example company name, so I'm going to recognise it fairly quickly. The second reason is, what we've just done here is we've just effectively created our own customised fund fact sheet. If we click on reports, you'll see a list of fact sheets that we've already created for you in varying levels of detail, so have a look at them and see which fact sheets best meet your requirements. But the report I want to draw your attention to at the minute is what's called the Current View Report. Now the Current View Report will do exactly as it seems. It will generate a PDF document of the current view. So the panels of information that we had in front of us, it will put them onto that document. It will take the name of the fund, put it at the top of the document, but most importantly, whatever you've called your dashboard, it will take the name of that dashboard and it will pop it on the sidebar of that document. Therefore, this is just like creating your own customised fund fact sheet. You can then save that report straight to your own filing system on your own computer or print it directly from here. I will close it down. I'll now show you how to compare multiple funds alongside each other. So I'll close out of Dashboard and back in Fund Research we have two buttons at the top, Fund versus Fund which is greyed out at the minute, I'll explain why in a second, and then Fund Comparison. Now Fund Comparison is available so we'll focus on this for now and if you take your mouse and hover over that button it does tell you exactly what you can do. Click to compare selected funds include benchmark sector averages and time frames. So we need to select the funds that we want to compare. Now to multi-select anything in the system, you need to hold your control key down, which is normally found in the bottom left hand corner of your keyboard. Or if you've got an Apple Mac, you need to right click and enable multi-select. So if I hold my control key down and then click on the funds that I would like to compare, they will all light up in blue to let me know that they've been selected. So I've selected three funds, but you can select as many funds as you want. Once you've selected your funds, then click on comparison. It will open up in a new heading and it will compare those funds in three key areas listed on the left. So we have a cumulative returns line chart, we've then got a risk reward scatter chart and a discrete returns bar chart. You can start to add additional information into these charts using the buttons in the bottom left hand corner. You can add the sector averages for the funds by popping a tick in that box. It will just refresh and bring through the sector averages. You can also add in any benchmarks you would like to compare the funds alongside by popping ticks in all the boxes. Finally in the bottom left hand corner we've got time period. Now time period defaults to best fit. Best fit is as far back as the youngest fund goes up to a maximum of five years. So if you have a three-year-old fund, it will start from that three-year point so as to always give you a like-for-like like comparison. You can leave it at best fit or you can change your time period to one year, three years, five years, or you can customise it and select your start month and year and your end month and year. You can then generate a report. The funds comparison report will simply put those three charts into one client friendly document. So that's funds comparison, comparing multiple funds in three key areas. We've then got fund versus fund, which is still greyed out at the minute. The reason it's greyed out is fund versus fund is an in-depth one versus one comparison area. So this will only be available when you've got two funds selected. 
Now this area works particularly well if you want a more thorough comparison in an example perhaps where you're recommending a fund switch from one fund to another. Or maybe you just haven't been able to decide between which fund to recommend to the client and you'd like to pit two funds head to head. So click on the first fund, hold your control key down, click on the second fund and you'll notice that as we have two funds selected, fund versus fund has now lit up and become available. If we click on that button, it opens up in a new heading, takes those two funds that we've selected, remember it can only be two, and it compares them in seven key areas listed on the left hand side. So it's a bit more in depth, as I said, than your comparison area. So we have key facts about the funds. We then have asset allocations down the bottom, equity sectors, fixed income credit quality, and then we still have our discrete returns, cumulative returns and risk reward. Again, you can head to reports and you can generate a fund versus fund report to that effect. There are also panels available in the quick view area which allow you to compare multiple funds. Multi-select the funds you would like to compare. Then using Quick View on the right hand side, click on the drop down box to select the panels you would like to view. Panels which allow multiple fund comparisons have the words multi select in brackets to the right hand side. The final area we're going to cover in this video is the pinning functionality. All of the funds have this little grey pin to the left hand side of them. If you click on that grey pin, a few things happen. The first thing that happens is the pin turns red. The second thing that happens is it moves the fund to the top of the results grid. And then finally, what we've just done is exactly as it looks. We've just stuck a drawing pin into that fund. So now, no matter what I search for on the left hand side, this fund will remain in my results grid. So this might be useful if, say for example, this is one of the client's existing funds. Maybe you want to pin it, carry out some further research to find some other funds to compare it alongside. Or maybe you're building up your preferred fund list. So you found the first fund, pinned it, We'll then find the second fund, pin it, third fund, pin it, and keep going until you've got all the funds there in your preferred fund list, and then you can save that list. And that's it for fund research. Thanks for listening.